Today we're taking a look at the Air Jordan 11 Cherries. What's up guys, BJ Kicks here. Welcome back to my channel, Kicks on Kicks, where I review sneakers and react to sneaker news. Now, today we are taking a look at a shoe that just got a lot harder to get. Uh, a StockX just announced yesterday that they are banning the sale of these Air Jordan 11 Cherries from their website. And that means it's gonna be even harder to get this highly sought after holiday release. Uh, but anyway, we're taking a look at the Air Jordan 11 Cherries and I'm excited about them. Now, you guys know, I'm gonna give you a quick overview. I'm gonna show you the packaging. Then I'm gonna give you a few legit checking points uh, before we throw these on feet and get out of here. Now, before we get any further into this video, gotta give a huge shout out to Faye over at Pick Pop for sending this pair over for me to review. Uh, so this is a replica. I'm gonna give you a few things you can look out for because there's almost always some things that you can look at to say, yeah, these are fake versus the real ones. So we're gonna do that today. So let's start with a quick once over because bang, this is the Air Jordan 11 Cherry. This is probably the most iconic uh, Jordan silhouette just from a design standpoint. Like, I mean, my favorite, this barely makes the top five Jordan silhouettes for me, but you're hard pressed to find anyone who doesn't have a Jordan 11 like, you know, at the top of their Mount Rushmore sneakers. So anyway, starting at the bottom of the shoe, you got your icy outsole. Gotta love that. These used to be super icy blue, but like when they first came out, these were like a clear sole. So now we're getting more closer to that clear outsole. Uh, but anyway, you got your uh, sort of, well, I don't know if this is like a Phylon midsole, but super soft. Love that. Um, and then you got your mudguard. And this is probably the most iconic part of any Air Jordan 11 is that patent leather mudguard all the way around. Now, this is the high cut patent leather. Uh, there were some retros, uh, different iterations of Jordan 11s that the uh, patent leather was a little bit thinner of a strip at the bottom. But this is that nice high cut like the OGs. Um, and then on your sort of lace area, you've got this kind of ballistic mesh, right? It almost feels like Kevlar, like a bulletproof vest, like tactical material. Um, but anyway, you got that. And then you got these overlays for your lacelets. Uh, and so very cool. You get flat laces in so many shoes. This one's got the rope laces. And I think they just look nice of course on your third uh lace loop you got your jump man jordan branding there on the tongue um and then probably the last feature let's talk about this sort of ankle collar area where you have this um i mean this looks like a more natural leather sometimes it's a natural leather sometimes it's a synthetic but you got this synthetic uh leather overlay for ankle support with your jump man and that cherry red right there and then you got this little pull tab Help you get your sneakers on, give you a little bit of flex. And that's got the two, three right there. And it's like a silk screen. It's not embroidered. It doesn't feel like it's going to rub off anytime soon. But so, yeah, better quality than we've gotten in the past on the two, three on the back. But yeah, and that's the shoe. Taking a look at the inside, you got your cherry red on the sock liner, which is great because I hate like white sock liners. My shoes get all dirty. Then on the inside, I won't take it out, but you got your red insole with your white jump man there and that's the shoe now taking a look at the outsole very dope like i said you got that clear translucent um kind of milky not as ice blue as uh other retros but you got that all over the shoe you got these two hits of herringbone for traction in that nice cherry red and then another kind of revolutionary thing from the air jordan 11 is this carbon fiber it's really meant for stability um, and help you kind of with your forefoot flex and all that uh, don't get me into performance reviewing because i don't play ball but this is supposed to just help you kind of bounce back on your feet a little bit more like and just fly because just, just go faster but anyway your shoe's not flexing so much you can get a stable running cutting movements out of it but anyway got your herringbone right or your your carbon fiber right here in the red and black and I remember this used to like not be carbon fiber on the fakes. It used to be like kind of feel like this soft pattern, but nah, it's definitely hard. So 
that's dope. Um, and that's really the shoe. Don't forget that white jump man on your outsole. So we looked at the shoe, got a pretty detailed look at the shoe. Let's take a look at the packaging real quick. This comes in a pretty regular, regular uh, Air Jordan box. You got your gray on the bottom. You got your black box top with the same sort of Air Jordan branding. Uh, I feel like we've got this on like fives in the past. Well, that Air Jordan reminds me of like the seven era. Maybe this is just an 11 box and I'm just slow, but I remember back the retros back in the days to have that whole drawer and it was two-toned. I wish we got that with these because this just feels a little bit less special. I'd rather have like the, the older box with the cool branding and the spot gloss and all that. But anyway, that's the box. I got mine in a size nine because I wear a size nine. <laughs> so yeah, we took a look at the box, took a look at the shoe. Uh, now I wanna give you a few points for legit checking. Where you're gonna be kind of hard pressed to find uh, the differences between these and retail shoes, unless you have the retail shoe in hand, then it's a lot easier to spot those differences. But what I will say is you should expect to see these Widow's Peaks uh, right here toward the back of your foot, right here on like the middle of the toe box, and then again toward the back of your foot on the medial side. This joint stitch looks good on the medial side, maybe on other, or other replicas is not as good, but these look pretty good. Um, and yeah, there's really not much else to look for except this Jumpman. The quality of the embroidery on the Jumpman is always questionable on fakes to me. Uh, so you can definitely take a look at that to see how well it's done. I think the fingers, the fingers on the Jumpman are almost always gonna be the tail because they never look quite right. Um, and beyond that, there's not really much you're gonna see with the naked eye, but I decided to throw these under a black light and I was kind of surprised at just what I found. So I'm turning this light down a little bit and let's play the black light game. So when I light these shoes up with a black light, you can already see it. You can even see it on camera. There is a ton of glue like all over this midsole. And, you know, that's how you know. I mean, that's where you can see that they really just kind of threw these together at a factory. So I know there's a lot of fakes passing through StockX. This shoe's not even allowed to be sold on StockX, but you won't have to worry about this pair passing with all this glue all over it. But yeah, so I just thought that was kind of crazy. Let's turn this light back on. I thought it was wild how much excess glue you could see. There's even like a spot where there's like glue on my patent leather that I'm have to like, I don't know, I don't know if I wanna take a razor blade to it, but really work hard on my fingernails trying to get that off. Uh, but yeah, this glue, this will light you up. This will light you up. But other than that, I mean, the fact that all you can see on a shoe is glue stains, and that's the only thing that's gonna like set it apart from the real shoe, Fakes are, fakes are good these days, which is crazy. Now, these are releasing on December 10th, and these are going to have a price tag, a retail price tag of $225, which is crazy. I remember when $185 was a lot for a pair of Jordans. But I mean, it's the holiday release. It's a pair of 11s. There's going to be a lot of these to go around, at least there should be. But at $225, man, that's a lot of money. But anyway... 225 on December 10th. And let me just tell you, right now, these are banned from being sold on StockX because of everything that happened in Memphis. People just ransacking trailers and running off with all the J's. So if you can't get these on release day, it's going to be even harder to get them considering all the theft and stuff. Now, maybe they'll let these be resold after release day on StockX. But right now, on like Goat and some of the other apps, these are already a five to $700 shoe, which is crazy to me to pay that for this general release Air Jordan. But that's the times we're living in. These are banned from StockX. Find them retail if you can. And if you can't, there's ways. But um, yeah, that's the shoe. Let me know if you're going for these. Overall, what would I rate this? For me, it's an Air Jordan 11. I mean, it's a great silhouette. This colorway is a little bit too loud for me. 
kind of draws a lot more attention than I like drawing with my sneakers. I'd much rather have the Space Jams or the Playoff 11s. But these are pretty cool too. I know people have been wanting this colorway for a long time. And now you're not just getting it at the flea market. You're getting actual Jordan quality with the colorway that people have always wanted. So uh, it's a solid eight. It's a solid eight. Um, it might be a seven and a half for me. But it's a dope shoe. You guys let me know. Is this one of your top releases of the year? This definitely doesn't make my top five at all. But let me know if you're getting it down below. I'm going to go ahead and put this on feet and give you guys a quick view. And I'll see you another one soon. Peace.